Hello, and welcome to the Mindful Movement Podcast. I'm your host, Les Raymond. Thanks for tuning in today for another episode. I got to speak with Neil Silverman from the Peace, Love, and Happiness Club today. As you probably know, if you watch these on the video format, there's always plants behind me. Plants are a big part in our life, both mine and Sarah's. And Neil uh, definitely plays a role in that. He owns a plant store. Him and his partner started the Peace, Love and Happiness Club and are committed to creating a sense of not just community, but spreading a sense of joy through that community. And it's really a beautiful thing. Neil has also been a coaching client of Sarah's and was kind enough to open up a little bit about what that process was about. So I appreciate it. I know it was a little emotional for him. Um, so I'm really grateful for the vulnerability and hopefully uh, you folks can find value in that. I hope you enjoy the conversation. Neil Silverman, thanks for joining me on the Mindful Movement Podcast. Thanks for having me, Les. So not long ago, I watched my wife open a box that contained mostly plants and some crystals. And it had been a long time since I've watched her experience such a level of joy. So thank you for helping provide that. Yeah. Um, so uh, you are the sometimes creator. I, What's Go ahead. Sometimes I get a little bit emotional about this because <laughs> um, it really speaks to my life mission, which is to provide for other people to have joy. And um, the products that we carry, the plants at Peace, Love, and Happiness Club really light up people's lives. And um, that's the whole purpose for doing it. Well, it sounds like you found uh, the right purpose for you, for sure. Peace, Love, Happiness, Cl Peace, Love, and Happiness Club, that's a like a brick and mortar shop that you run? Yeah, it's a brick and mortar shop in the Fremont neighborhood of Seattle. And it's also an online business where we deliver plants to people across the continental U.S. and sometimes Puerto Rico, Alaska, and uh, Hawaii. Okay. Have you always been fascinated or had this deep connection with plants, or is this something you developed? Um, always. I'm not sure, but at least till the time I was around four years old, um, uh I just remember being a kid and we had a huge living room and my mother had a collection of plants. They were all, a lot of them were on a big table in front of a huge window. And then we had the whole ceiling was lined with um, hooks that hanging plants were in. And it was my job to keep them watered and alive. Um, it's interesting because uh, my partner, John Singh, he, uh, I've always liked plants. I've always tended to them. I've always had gardens. I never really thought about it. But my partner, John, is like a hobbyist enthusiast of plants. And at one point, we had a loft in Los Angeles and a house in Bellevue, Washington. And between the two of them, we had 20 fish tanks. And in the fish tanks, there were some fish, but mostly what John do, was doing was aquascaping. So I know you want to have questions for me, but this is a kind of story that I tell us. So I figure it'd be good for the viewers. At one point, um, I was working on building a website for our fashion company. And John had me taking care of all his plants in the tanks in the Los Angeles house where he was taking care of the ones in the Bellevue house. And at one point he decided that he wanted to put them in the store. It's like they just crawled out of the tanks. And um, yeah, that started a really huge, uh, like, moving into in my fashion stores of plants um succulents around five to seven years ago came on the market in a really strong way and i i'm like the data guy for my company 
And I just watched the numbers keep going up and up in sales. So we started allocating more and more floor space. Yeah. And then when COVID came, um, we had in our loft, in we had moved in Seattle to a, a loft, a 1,600 square foot space. And we had around 1,700 plants. And the first month of um, COVID, when we were shut down, we didn't even know we didn't have to be shut down because we were an essential business. Because at that point, we had registered as a nursery. Um, so nurseries are essential businesses. And um, anyways, our first month, nobody bought any of our clothing, any of our fragrances, crystals, anything like that online. And yet we did our whole store sales goal based on the plants. And we didn't know if we were going to stay alive. So, and we knew we didn't have any money. So we were like, well, I guess we got to get rid of everything else and just get a lot more plants. And that's the beginning of what Peace, Love and Happiness Club is now. Now our space is 5,000 square feet and it's a total urban jungle oasis. It's um, when people walk in, their jaws just drop because the beauty of all the plants. And um, yeah, it's really fulfilling for me that way. And I don't mean to take up all your interview questions, Les. I just had some thinking about this before we got going. No, that's fantastic, Neil. It is fascinating the connection people uh, cultivate with plants. I too remember when I was young, my mom always having plants around the house. I didn't have the responsibility of watering them, but I remember it being important to her. And I definitely grew accustomed to it and then noticed later in life when I was in a space that didn't have any plants and there was like a, you know, a lack of life in, in the environment due to that. I continued to connect with plants too, not as much the indoor plants as like the outdoor and the big plants like trees, but it's been very, it's been very enjoyable to watch my wife go kind of from zero to high speed with her. Like it was very rapid onset connection and then compulsion. And now we have, you know, 150 plants around the house and she dedicates half a Sunday, you know, caring for them. Um, and it's, it's been very nourishing and I think fulfilling for her. There's, there's something about the connection. You mentioned a word uh, bef when we were off record before we hit record, I think it was uh, probably, I'm not going to say it this right. Biophilia. That's correct. That I guess speaks to that connection or interaction. Can you uh, dive a little deeper on that? Yeah. Biophilia. It, it's a, study of how humans interact with um, nature and the reaction. It's the peaceful Zen kind of feeling that you get when you're in nature. It actually, um, there's been studies that prove that when humans are in nature, there's an increased serotonin release, which um, gives joy happiness, um, contentedness, and uh, I can tell you going into what used to be my clothing store, um, it had a very different feeling than what is now a huge plant store. There's, when you walk in, there's just an amazing, that kind of sigh that you get when um that kind of i've made it feeling that kind of relaxed uh maybe it's a presence just you know you drop what's in your head because you're focusing on the nature part and um i don't think i've seen many if any people when they're around big plants like not grabbed by their beauty. Hmm. It's interesting. I've been studying health related topics for a while and in other cultures, I think they call it, uh, there's a word for it, but basically forced bathing is like a prescribed process 
from doctors that, you know, you don't really get here. It's always like a pill, but they would actually tell people to go spend time in nature. There is something that's taking place. And I think a lot of it, we probably don't really understand yet the different um, interactions, the compounds interacting with the different senses we have, whether it's, um, you know, things that we smell that we don't even notice we're smelling that they're putting off that is still interacting with their biology. I think there's a, a lot going on there. Do you, yeah, do you f- I, I, um, I was actually seeing a counselor slash therapist at one point and he'd given me homework every week. And part of it was in the beginning, 15 minutes in nature, just leave wherever you are, go into nature. In Seattle, you have to leave a little bit to get into the nature, but that was part of my prescription and uh, relax my nerves. That's great. You know, it's, you know, as somebody told me medicine is whatever helps you live. I mean, there's definitely a, a medicinal um, process that like you uncover when spending time in nature with plants or, or environment in general. Um, do you notice over the years that certain, like I notice the plants in our house that there's a type of plant that Sarah likes generally, and it's very different than the type of plant that I gravitate towards. Do you notice any consistencies or like differences where certain personalities gravitate towards a certain style of plant? Kinda, um, But everybody, it's like the human species, everybody's so different. Um, There are a whole lot of ladies that, uh, middle-aged ladies really like this one plant that I can think of called the Tradescantia Nanook. You probably have one right behind you. Uh, It's a purple plant. Um, They just like the color and, um, but a lot of people also like the golden pothos hanging to your right in the planter hanging there um it's just an easy to care for plant that's lush and full and that's one of the things that we focus on really beautiful plants that are big and full and lively and um yeah uh i think what sarah really likes also is ones that are easy or hard to mess up (laughs) it's very it's like there's like an emotional response when you can't find a way to keep one alive and like once in a while you lose one or it's not doing well and it's um it's it's like an attack on your ego and it's depressing (laughs) yeah you know it's funny less because um again different kinds of people a lot of people want their plants to look great and they look at them um in indonesia they call them or ornamental plants and um, so they're supposed to be decorations for your home, right? right. And um, so you want them to look good, right? But then there's, uh, and that's what I really cater to. I run around my store pulling all the dead leaves off, making sure everything's watered. And um, I try to deliver a premium quality plant. However, um, not all plants are on their way up with their health, uh, kind of like us. Sometimes we have some pitfalls and when they're not doing so great, there's a whole group of people for that too. Um, We are currently launching a new program we're calling rescue plants. These are plants that are not what we were just talking about. They're a little bit um, rougher around the collar or I don't know what the good term for that is, but not wearing so well. And um, instead of tossing them in the garbage or, you know, they've probably been worked on for a while, try to bring them back together. They're not totally looking horrible, but there's a large community of people that want to nurse a plant from sickness to health. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think that you use the word nourishing before and it, reminded me um there's this human need to nurture things for sure and nurture and nourishing kind of go along together and um i think like before people used to have big families and they had pets 
now people have pets without the big family and the plants are the new pets. And um, this isn't something that I've made up. It's just like, if you scroll on the plant groups, this is common posts. People just have lots of plants and love to take care of them. And um, yeah, I think it's really good for their mental health. It's funny in uh, I've always been connected with crystals and I think you, you carry those too. And like Sarah's always putting plants around the house and wherever she puts, like if there's more than a couple plants, I feel like it's time to add a crystal. So they, there's something about them. I feel like go hand in hand. I guess I'm not alone with that. That's common in the, in the plant kingdom. Again, right behind you crystals with right. your plants. I think I sent you guys some of those. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's about nature. I mean, when we're in nature, we're experiencing joy. We're all curious to know what's going on, like what the different rock formations are, what the different colors are, what the different textures are. Um, I think that along with the plants, there's kind of a balance between solid ground and lush growth. And uh, as a decorating style, I think it's genius. And uh, I think a lot of other people do too. It's funny. You mentioned the need that humans have, Neil, to like nurture. And, um, you know, we, it always feels good to to give. Like we think that we're giving to help somebody else and like but there's a chemical change that happens in us just through the act of giving even even if you like give a dog a bone and the dog's not saying like thanks that meant a lot it's just like taking it and running away to eat it or whatever but there's something that we experience with with giving and it's like there's something fulfilling when you're giving what you have to the plant as you're nurturing it over time like the plant might not be sitting there saying thanks a lot but it's like you're still creating something within your own like collection of neurotransmitters like you mentioned serotonin earlier that's creating a positive change within you just through the act of like giving your service to you know trying to provide for it to let it grow um, it's an interesting type of medicine because, you know, anything that helps you feel better from the inside out can be really is a really useful tool to tap into. And, um, you know, can I tell is, you something less? Sure. So in the spirit of giving. Since we changed to doing all plants, um, we've had people come to us and ask us if they could come hang out and take care of the plants. <laughs> That's funny. It's um, so meaningful to me because I know people don't just waste their time, you know? And this has developed into what is now our volunteer program. We have a lot of people that come especially on the weekends like when people have time off we have four hour shifts and we have like a write-up of stuff for them to do to learn about taking care of the plants and help us take care of the plants i think it really helps us keep even better condition for our plants but it also helps the community kind of build around something that they're in love with and um people do want to give and I think there's a kind of kismet between giving and that which you're passionate about. And um, yeah, so in the giving spirit, people want to take care of our plants. And I just think it's amazing. Yeah, it sounds it. Well, it sounds like you've created a special place there. Um, yeah, I really, um, I'm not a person that comes from a very strong self-esteem situation, but um, looking back for the past three to five years, we, um, especially since we moved into the new space, our, our new landlord 
his mother owns the building and she's a little bit older. She um, made one request of us and it was to find a way to bring the community together in using the space. And, um, you know, I've always had stores and I've had a lot of people around, but I never really thought about community and what that means. But having such a huge group of followers online and having huge influxes of people on the weekend, um, it's really nourishing and nurturing for me. Um, on Saturdays and Sundays, like I, I actually have to use data to look at this to know exactly when I can't miss being in the store. Because it's from 1.30 to 4.30. Our store is so full. Sometimes people have to wait outside. And we have loud dance music. And it, it's a riot. People just really enjoy the plants. They really enjoy the environment. And I think they also really enjoy the community. And that's the part that I'm getting to. You know, in the spirit of giving, they're... Um, People giving in a certain kind of way, I think that is community. Yeah, for sure. That's really interesting that you got a request from the landlord. When I think of a corporate landlord, I don't think of somebody that's requesting that you create a sense of community with the space that you're renting from them. That's really special. I, um, I've had many landlords and these guys are different. I have to say that. They're not corporate landlords. Um, they do have corporate spaces. And they also have a art space and other community-related spaces. And I, uh, my previous landlords, I didn't really want to support. I had to because I needed the space. <laughs> these guys were partners together. And um, it, it, like... It's working. The, yeah, it's working really great. I really enjoy the space and um, I think they really enjoy having the building utilized in a way that brings community together. Well, that's great. Um, change topics a little bit if you're all right with it. I mean, the, the yeah. reason why I was asked to reach out to you is you've worked with my wife, Sarah, on a coaching um, basis, from what I understand. Are you, yeah. and, um, and she, I, you know, I don't get the details of that, which, uh, which is good for ethical reasons. She can't talk to me about, you know, but I knew, I knew, I heard at least that like she was working with someone that is a store owner that deals with plants and that meant something to her because of her love and plants. And it's definitely her love of plants has increased since interacting with you. Are you comfortable talking at all about what it's been like working with Sarah on a coaching basis? Yeah, totally. Oh, sweet. I yeah. don't get to hear much feedback. I know that she's an angel and a wizard, but I don't get to hear much feedback from the people that have worked with her. Um, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure what to say. Like in the spirit of giving that we were just talking about, when I enjoy something and am passionate about it, I end up wanting to over talk it. So I don't want it to sound like a sales pitch. So I'm wondering what you want me to discuss on this. Uh, wh whatever I, you're comfortable saying, whatever you want to say. It's just a well, conversation. I guess like I told the whole story before about the store, I'll tell you the story about my coaching with Sarah. Um at the beginning of COVID, when we weren't sure if you were going to have a business, we had to cut out all our expenses. And at the time, I was on some antidepressants and Adderall and a lot of drugs. And I, um, number one, didn't want to have to go to the hospital and see the psychiatrist to get these prescriptions to keep going with them. But I also realized they were making me not feel so great. And I wanted to make a change. So I stopped doing that. And I don't suggest anybody doing it like I did, but I just totally quit cold turkey. And I um, 
And I had been taking them for a very, very, very long time, like maybe 30 years. Oh, wow. And I know I'm supposed to have nice language here, so I guess I'll use this term. I feel like I kind of lost it. And um, I was online and um, I was looking at loving kindness meditations and I found Sarah's. And I had listened to a lot of them and Sarah's just worked for me. So I listened to it for a long time before ever doing anything, contacting her. But I noticed that after listening to her loving kindness meditation, like kind of as a a ritual in the morning, um, my days, and this was during the beginning of COVID, were less dark. And I was having a very dark time worrying about if my business was going to succeed, if we were going to have money for food, this, that, and the other. And um, I then started looking at some of the other videos, excuse me, produced by the Mindful Movement, Sarah, and you, I think. Um, and um, it in using the meditations, uh, like <laughs> I had said to Sarah at one point after connecting with her, how come there's not like a step one, step two, step three? Because that's the way that my mind thinks. She goes, well, people come in at different area, different places in their life. And some of them might want to like relieve anxiety. Some might want to have gratitude. Some might, and and I thought about it and it made a lot of sense to me. And I just started listening to all different med meditations um, in the morning and sometimes at night too, based on what I was feeling. And fe I was feeling like doing the meditations could nurture my soul because it was hurting. And, um, yeah, after a while, I, when I contacted her, I just saw, like, not that I hadn't known peace before, but I learned a different way of peace inside my head that um, let all the other things going on inside my head um, get defocused from. So uh, in the process of the meditations that I've been doing, um, especially the loving kindness one. Uh, I kind of go through this process um, where the feelings that you have from loving kindness, you expand them through your body and you share them with people that you like and you don't like, and then with the world. And... I think that all that focus um, brings a sense of solitude, of peace. And it does for me. And so, yeah, so I started talking with Sarah. Um, I hit her up and asked her to do a hypnotherapy session. And um, I've done other kind of work. I want to say similar, but different. And of course, we talked about mother issues and things that really caused a lot of anguish in my head. And um, I don't know how long I've been working with Sarah as my coach now, but I'm thinking it's a couple of years. And 
it seems to be our process is ever changing, but the result and the focus kind of seems the same, which is, um, it's kind of like the mission of my, my store, peace, love, and happiness. So there's peace, there's love, there's happiness. I also throw joy in there too. But I think that um, there's a way that when you're not feeling so great about yourself, you can keep focusing on the not feeling good and then start talking with people about the not feeling good and festering about the not feeling good. And in my coaching sessions, we kind of talk about the not feeling good part and then kind of try to clear that energy to move forward into changing the focus on the peace, love, and happiness part. And um, for me, really life-changing. Um, I kind of want your your podcast to sound a little bit lighter than I am, but I think I have a past that's kind of a little bit dark and um, super hyper emotional. And um, I don't think I am that way totally anymore. I think like at the beginning of COVID, when I had stopped taking my antidepressants for about two years, I was crying all day long, every day, just to everything was miserable to me. And it's taken a lot of work, but um, in coaching with Sarah, I um, really discovered what my own personal values are and what's really important to me. And For me, I'm really super emotional about this because I feel like it's my uh, my life mission. But sharing with me is really important. Kindness with me is really important. And um, sharing joy and kindness to me, super important. And um, by using plants as a vehicle for that, I feel kind of in a way like, and again, this is about my own personal values. I'm not trying to tell you this will work this way for you or not. But for me, my for my own personal values, the things that I want to do, sharing joy with people, having focus on that, um, leaves a lot less time for focusing on all the things that don't work and leave for a lot leaves a lot more room for experiencing joy on a totally different plane level dimension than I could before. Hmm. For me, life-changing and really super important and for me necessary neil th thanks for sharing some of that um i know that might not have been easy um but you know i do, I do appreciate you um kind of letting go and being able to say some of the things there's something you know, and I don't worry about trying to make the podcast light. The The podcast is whatever the podcast is. You're not alone. I mean, I think it's very common for people to feel similarly, to have a lot of dark space underneath that they don't know what to do with. And I think partly we're, there's part of us that's wired to focus on the things that are dark um, because at some point, 
focusing on um, maybe threats or negative things was really useful for survival and that that wiring is still in us somewhere and it doesn't necessarily serve us the same way today but you mentioned something about um you know clearing those out just to create more space to focus on the things you do want i mean it's it's like the plants in the garden i know sarah's referenced over the years like what you water will grow so spend time thinking about what you want to grow and they will grow whatever you think about will expand yeah less really important that you say that because um i spent a lot of time focusing on those things that weren't working and festering about them and I'm not saying I have, have had a bad life, but um, yeah, it feels a little bit dark. Actually, a lot bit dark. Um, in finding some kind of release for it and changing focus, the, the focus is totally the most important thing. And you're right. It's a survival system to keep us safe in the same position to keep worrying, focusing, festering on things that aren't working for us. And um, yeah, I am so happy that I'm so happy that I've found this um, working relationship with Sarah and coaching that where we can focus on values that I do want to have, values that I do have, um, I'm not trying to, again, sell this program or something, but I've done a lot of counseling, a lot of therapy, a lot of different kinds of personal training and development. And I found that all of it's about focusing on what's not working and just rehashing it and rehashing it, rehashing it. And I, maybe I just wasn't right with the right person or something, but I definitely find um, Sarah's coaching style provides a lot of access to me to a lighter side of life, to joy. That's great. Yeah, I, I think I know what you mean. I mean, I obviously am spoiled. I, um, I've been married to Sarah for 20 plus years now. And there is something about this like specific skill set. It's like she's a surgeon. I mean, I, I'll help people often. And like I had somebody recently, I was on a hike with somebody and I was giving like some tips based on, you know, how they were expressing like the challenges they were going through. And like, I have a bunch of one liners and I could ask questions that might get to the next step. But basically, I'm going to throw a lot of darts at the wall and see which ones stick. <laughs> and Sarah has a skill where when you answer one question, the decisiveness and the like the focus of the next how that leads to the next question is so productive there's no waste on um unnecessary fluff it's like an emotional surgeon that's just zeroing in closer to some root cause that you could then clean up and it's it's kind of fascinating as a spectator. She'll whip she'll whip those tools out on me if I'm having a bad day and I get I'm fortunate to be able to get 5 minutes here, 10 minutes there when I need it and it's remarkable. It's remarkable how quick she can get you from a point of pain to this is what's really going on underneath and then 
help you reshape that and build from there in a positive direction. It's it's a very interesting um, skill set that I think she is continuing to refine over the years. And um, it's great that some of us get access and could yeah. um, use that tool. So listening to, and I'm thinking, you know, some of the previous work that I've done in personal training and development, self-help, whatever you want to call it, um, kind of focuses on what you're committed to, right? I think in Sarah's languaging, she'll talk about your your values. And um, I think that what you're saying she's like a surgeon about, she has a certain kind of laser precision guided thought process to what is it that you're trying to move into and um it's highly effective yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i'm glad she's around <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> yeah well i'm glad to hear that um you know you've gotten so much value out of working with her and i know it's very fulfilling to her to do that type of work for people um you know i think most people are trying to heal from something and there's a lot of tools that can help and um i think she is also grateful that she could be a part of those processes and uh, you know to take part in the journey of healing that people undergo when going through that self-development or personal growth, you know, whatever you, you refer to there. So um, it's great to hear. And I, I appreciate you being willing to talk. I didn't know what we were going to, I knew we were going to talk about plants today. I didn't know how comfortable you were talking about um, your experience with working with her. So I appreciate you putting it out there for those that are listening that have maybe wondered what the process is like or what you can get out of it. It sounds like you've made a lot of progress with coaching and it's been a good tool for you. Yeah, Les, um, I want to, I don't know if we're ending up here soon, but I, wanna, <laughs> I wanted to say something about what you were saying because um, the, I guess it's more like a summation. The, the things that, I think, again, the loving kindness meditation, I mean, there's a lot of other ones out there, but somehow Sarah's voice to me just registers for me. And focusing on loving and kindness, so important for me. And then the other thing, like, I didn't even know that this was the thing. Like in America, I'd never heard of gratitude. You know, and um, last year I was fortunate to take a business trip to Thailand for six weeks. And I was um, doing my coaching with Sarah weekly at that point. And um, I had a few meetings with her and the people in Thailand, they're so grateful for every single thing they have. And I think that's another thing that I think adds to Sarah's level of effectiveness. She's like, she has gratitude for your willingness to share with her the things that aren't working and what your um, desired outcome is. And somehow just paste it together. Um, I kind of feel a little bit like she's a role model for me in selling plants. Because um, there's a certain level of joy that I knew I needed to find in my own life. And I know for plant buyers, it's a lot easier. Because they can come in and fall in love with the second. But to actually have you fall in love with yourself and teach you about self-love and compassion for yourself, um, 
that's a really good skill for someone in Sarah's position to have. So, yeah, I really appreciate it. And I have a gratitude for it. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, loving yourself is super hard. Uh, I, I can relate. I've definitely gone through um, my challenges with that over the years and, and still do. It's, I wouldn't say it's a place you get. It's more of a practice that you have. You you know, when you mentioned gratitude, I haven't dwelled on this in a while, but there was a time in my life where without a gratitude practice, like I don't know how it would have navigated forward. There's something about, you know, you also mentioned the darkness that you have. And I know many people have areas of darkness. Like there's nothing that shines light on darkness as fast as gratitude. Like it's hard to practice being grateful for anything that you have in your life or anything that exists and be in that darkness simultaneously. It, again, it's a change of focus. I mean, you're kind of focusing on the dark and the misery of life or you're kind of focusing on the love and the kindness and the gratitude in life. And um, it's totally a practice. It, it's um, <laughs> I laugh about this in, in our coaching sessions because oftentimes I'm not wanting to go through a miserable crying session and <laughs> I'll just be like Sarah can I just have the easy button you know that <laughs> yeah That's I just funny. want to press a button and have it fixed but um I guess I'm human and there's processes and there's a lot of um, infrastructure built into the humanity that are designed to keep us safe and safe means without change. And mm. I think being in a joyous state is actually an, an act of creation. You generate your joy. Do you get that? Yeah, absolutely. And so it's not automatic. It's not like your psyche telling you, you know, like, be safe. You have to not interact with that person or something. It's like you have to focus yourself on your gratitude um, and your love and your kindness. And in that, somehow generate the joy for yourself and it's not outside of living yeah and no like your joy is not outside of yourself oh my god really well said yes yeah which, which really is empowering because you know it's common for people to wait for their life situation to create the joy or the happiness and it's really like uh you are your own healer you it's something you can cultivate from within I totally agree. Yeah. Well, that's great that you've got to experience that journey. Um, I'm sure many of the listeners are curious about how they learn more about um, the plants, man. T direct them. How do they find out more? So if you're interested in plants, um, you can go to our website, www.peaceloveandhappiness.club. Or you can look the same thing up on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, and TikTok. And we're there for you. And we have tutorials on to teach you how to take care of your plants. We have plants for you to buy. And um, if you have any questions, we have DMs on Instagram that we respond to all day long. So enjoy joy, enjoy plants. Well, Neil, thank you for taking your time to, to share not only about the plants, but about your personal experience with working in Sarah. Um, I'll, I might tell her not to listen to this so it doesn't go to her head. Um, don't want her ego to blow up, but uh, really grateful for what you've provided for all the people in the club and the community that you're creating and for the extra plants in our house and um, it allows me to get 
to see the joy that Sarah gets out of um, having them in her life. And um, I really appreciate it. And I encourage the listeners to uh, try some plan out for yourself. And uh, for the listeners, always grateful for your listening, of course. And I hope everybody out there has a great day. Les, thanks so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, it's my These pleasure. interviews are like a growing thing for me too. We're in the business of growing. <laughs> you sure are. Thanks again, Neil. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. I look forward to getting more plants from the Peace, Love, and Happiness Club. Um, as far as Sarah's concerned, I don't think you could have too many plants. She's always looking for spots where you could fit just one more. And I can only assume that process will continue. So if I have to build more and more tables and shelves for her, then so be it. She's worth it. And I also have to admit, I like to having the plants around. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. I encourage you to check out Neil's plants and see if uh, there's a good fit in your living space. I hope you have a great day.